In our study of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, we looked at how we should be prepared for the coming of the Lord, as well as living our daily lives. Paul gives us final instructions so that we can be prepared for the coming of our Lord. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 1 and 2. Now, brothers, about times and dates, we do not need to write to you, for you know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. Paul reminds us here of Jesus' own words, where he said that even he did not know when this day was going to be. There have been many people over the years who have chosen a day and said that this is the day, but they have all been wrong. If you hear someone telling you that they know the specific day that Jesus is coming back, do not believe them, as it's not from God. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 3 While people are saying, peace and safety, destruction will come on them suddenly, as labor pains on a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. Though we do not know the specific day or month or year, we do have some signs from throughout the Bible, and one of them is in this verse. This verse speaks of a time when the people will feel peace and safety in the world, and in Revelation 13, we see a leader that promises such a time. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 4 and 5 But you, brothers, are not in darkness, so that this day should surprise you like a thief. You are all sons of the light and sons of the day. We do not belong to the night or to the darkness. We have the light of God living in us, and his very word to prepare us. Therefore, we should not be surprised like someone scared by a thief, but should keep one eye turned to the sky for the coming of Jesus. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 6 and 7 So then, let us not be like others who are asleep, but let us be alert and self-controlled. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk, get drunk at night. Why do we not drink, do drugs, or other things like that? We see a good reason here in this passage. We know that Jesus could come for us at any time, and I would not want to be drunk or drugged up when he shows up. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 8 But since we belong to the day, let us be self-controlled, putting on faith and love as a breastplate, and the hope of salvation as a helmet. As children of God, we walk in the light of day as he is light. See 1 John 1, 5 through 7. To get ready for this fight against our flesh, self-control, we put on our armor just as a soldier who is getting ready for battle would. Here Paul reminds us of a couple of the parts of our armor. For the full armor, you can check out Ephesians chapter 6. The breastplate covers the heart, and as Christians, our hearts have been changed through our faith in Jesus Christ, and we have God's love in our hearts. The helmet covers the head, and the brain where our knowledge of God's word helps us to recognize the lies of the devil. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 9 and 10. For God did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. He died for us so that, whether we are awake or asleep, we may live together with him. In Christ we are safe from the penalty of sin, but those without Christ will suffer terribly. Christ died so that while we live here on earth, are awake, he is with us, and when we die, sleep, we go to be with him. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 11. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up, just as in fact you are doing. Because of the fact that we are saved from the coming wrath, we should tell others. There's so much bad news in the world today, but we have the good news to share. During these bad times, we need to help others to grow in the knowledge of God and their faith in Jesus Christ. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 12. Now we ask you, brothers, to respect those who work hard among you, who are over you in the Lord, and who admonish you. Everyone needs to be humble enough to admit that we don't know everything. Part of that is having people who are stronger and more mature in their faith helping you to grow in your faith. We all need someone to keep us accountable to the word of God. Admonish us. We are to respect people like this because we see their hard work for the kingdom, and not because they simply have a title. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 13 Hold them in the highest regard in love because of their work. Live in peace with each other. They say that teachers are some of the most unappreciated workers as they receive little pay and put in a bunch of time. Paul is telling us here to hold the Christian leaders, teachers, in the highest regard because of the importance of their work. He also tells us to live in peace, but that does not mean we can't disagree on some things. As long as people believe in Jesus as the Son of God, then we should be able to work together for the kingdom. As John said in his first letter, we are to test the spirits, and there are only two sides. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 14 And we urge you, brothers, warn those who are idle, encourage the timid, help the weak, be patient with everyone. Paul continues with his list of things that should let others see that we are Christians. 
warn the idols talking about those that are saved but not actively serving the Lord. We are to tell them of the judgment of works that is to come and the rewards of serving God. Encourage the timid is talking about those that are shy or not bold in living the Christian life and we can tell them about the power in us through the Holy Spirit to do anything. Helping the weak is talking about those who do not have the abilities or financial means that we do and it is how it was in the early church. See Acts chapter 2 verse 42. We are also to show patience, and this one is very tough for some of us, but we have to meet people where they are and help them to get to know Jesus or to grow in their walk with him. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 15 Make sure that nobody pays back wrong for wrong, but always try to be kind to each other and to everyone else. We are to be like Christ, and just as he forgave us instead of condemning us for our sins, we are to forgive others. We are to be kind to brothers and sisters in Christ as well as those that do not know Jesus. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16-18 through 18. Be joyful always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Joy is not based on our physical surroundings, but on our inner well-being. When we are walking closely with God every day, the joy will just flow from us because of Him. To walk closely every day, we must constantly pray and worship God and give Him thanks no matter what's going on in our surroundings. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 19 Do not put out the Spirit's fire. We may ask ourselves how we could put out the fire, and it is actually an easy but slow process. In our personal lives, this is simply ignoring the prompting of the Holy Spirit in your everyday walk. This builds to become a habit so that your heart can actually get so hardened that you no longer even hear God speaking to you through the Spirit. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 20 do not treat prophecies with contempt. There are those who show contempt for the prophecies in the Bible. An example is the fact that most people do not live as if they believe that Jesus could come back today. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 21 and 22 Test everything, hold on to the good, avoid every kind of evil. Hold on to the things of God and get rid of the things of the devil. But how do we test things? We find the answer to that in 1 John 4. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 23 and 24. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do it. Paul prays for the readers to be pure and holy. Here, Moses said, it's not through us that this happens, but through the Holy Spirit. That's what Peter was talking about in 1 Peter 1, 2, when it said it was the work of the Spirit. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 25-27 through 27. Brothers, pray for us. Greet all the brothers with a holy kiss. I charge you before the Lord to have this read to all the brothers. Paul closes with three simple requests, and the first is prayer. Paul was a man of prayer, and so he desired to have others pray for him, just as he prayed for them. He reminds them to greet their fellow Christians warmly, and to read this letter to all the believers. This is a letter of instruction to help them to grow in their walk with Christ, and so he wanted all of them to hear it. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 28. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Paul ends this letter to the Thessalonians with a prayer for grace for the believers. We all need grace on a daily basis, and Paul knew that he needed it too.